Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. Edgar Allan Poe is perhaps one of the most textbook examples of a starving artist. He was a man who lived for his art and died young. In fact, Poe lost all of the loves in his life. His name is practically synonymous with the macabre and the disturbed. Poe wrote stories about dead people and of dying people. He wrote about torture chambers and haunted houses. He wrote of places with no chance of escape, like the pit and the pendulum and the telltale heart. And his most famous work, The Raven. His writings convey death, misery, and loneliness. Edgar Allan Poe was born in Boston, Massachusetts on January 19, 1809. Edgar was the second child born to actors David and Elizabeth Eliza Poe. Edgar was only about a year old when his father abandoned the family. Eliza was forced to support her little family on her own so she moved them to Richmond, Virginia, where she gave birth to a daughter named Rosalie. Shortly after Rosalie's birth, little Edgar watched as his 24-year-old mother wasted away from tuberculosis. Three days later, his father David also passed away. Some say that Edgar sat in a room with her body for days until it was taken away and buried. Now orphaned, Poe was separated from his older brother Henry and his younger sister Rosalie and was taken in by a wealthy merchant in Virginia named John Allen and his wife Frances. In the years that followed, the relationship with his foster parents became strained. Poe was described by his foster father as unappreciative and unaffectionate. When Poe became a young adult, he enrolled in the University of Virginia, but the strained relationship with the Allens had become hostile, and John Allen simply refused to pay for any more education for the young Poe. While in his second semester, Poe tried to pay for his own education by gambling, but this was a useless endeavor, and Poe ended up worse off than he started. John Allen pulled Poe from the university and demanded that he take a job for new pay at one of his accounting firms. Poe refused and traveled to Boston to become a poet. It was at this time that Poe's publishing career began with a collection of works that was titled Tamerlane and Other Poems. Poe actually spent much of his own money to self-publish 50 copies of the short pamphlet. The pamphlet was not even credited to Poe. It was only credited to a Bostonian. Poe was desperate, and with no higher education, his best option was to enlist in the United States Army. So, in 1827, Poe, hiding from debtors, entered the Army under the assumed name Edgar A. Perry. In the beginning, Poe did very well, but soon grew bored and asked that he be enrolled at the West Point Academy. In order to do so, Poe was required to find a replacement to carry out the last three years of his five-year term. Poe's replacement was a man named Samuel Graves, who accepted to finish Poe's enlistment for a fee, of course. Just before entering the West Point Academy, Poe's foster mother, Franny Allen, passed away from tuberculosis. Poe later failed as a cadet at West Point and had himself purposely court-martialed in order to leave his term of service. He was found guilty of dereliction of duty and promptly kicked out. Then Samuel Graves, remember him, came calling for the payment that Poe had promised him 
an agreement to Sir Outpost's term in the army. Poe, of course, didn't have the money and wrote a letter to Graves stating that he would get the money from John Allen, but it would take some time. As Poe's words, John Allen was a notorious drunk. Allen, upon seeing the letter that Poe wrote, was furious. Allen paid the debt and then completely disowned Poe, refusing to speak to him ever again. And he never did. In 1831, Poe returned to Baltimore to live with his Aunt Clem, brother Henry, and his first cousin Virginia. Henry had been in ill health, in part due to alcohol problems. Henry died on August 1, 1831. Poe then took a job working for a literary journal in Richmond and spent the next several years as a magazine editor and critic. He became well known for his style of criticism. Poe believed his role as a critic included exposing poor writing. His critiques were often witty, pointing out grammatical errors and exposing illogical reasoning. His harsher reviews earned him many enemies in the literary world. He was even given the nickname, the man with the tomahawk. Poe was among some of the first to propose setting standards by which to judge literary works. It was his belief that a work should be reviewed and critiqued for its own worth and that a person's background or social status should be irrelevant. In 1836, Poe, now 26 years old, married his 13-year-old cousin Virginia Clem. Keep in mind, this was perfectly acceptable in those days. In 1845, the poem The Raven was published and this one piece of work catapulted Poe to an instant celebrity. Poe was invited to all of high society's functions and was recognized on the street, but unfortunately, being a celebrity didn't pay the bills. Because there were no copyright laws in those days, what Poe wrote was freely copied and published by others. Despite these troubles, Edgar continued to write, but he also tried to hide from his troubles using alcohol. He gained a reputation for attending functions completely drunk. Many stated he would wander the streets wearing only one shoe, disheveled and disoriented which was just a polite way of saying that someone was intoxicated. The next year became increasingly worse for Poe. He made literary attacks on other famous writers like Emerson and Longfellow. His use of alcohol became increasingly worse, his fame was beginning to diminish, and then his wife Virginia contracted tuberculosis and died in 1847. After his wife's death, Poe tried to pursue many wealthy women in the vain hope of finding love and security, but he was rebuffed because of his affinity for alcohol and drunkenness. In a letter that Poe penned to his Aunt Clem, he wrote, My life seems wasted. The future looks a dreary blank. Poe was again desperate and decided he was going to travel to New York City in pursuit of work. He boarded a steamboat that made a stop in Baltimore, where Poe disembarked. And then, for the next six days, Poe completely vanished. There are no records of what happened to him during that time unless he was drunk, on a bender, lying face down in a ditch. On election day, Poe resurfaced at Gunner's Hall Tavern, also known as Ryan's Fourth Ward Poles in Baltimore. Yes, Bars were used as polling places for elections in those days. Poe was a complete mess. The vest and tie that he usually wore were gone, and he was dressed in someone else's clothing. And not only were the clothes filthy, but they were on backward. Many believe that the penniless Poe may have been part of a voter fraud scheme. You see, potential voters at the time were kept in rooms where they would change into different sets of clothing and then they would be sent to various polling places so that they could vote more than once. The payoff was free alcohol. By some twist of fate, two distant relatives of Poe happened to be in the bar that day. 
They were able to drag him out of the bar and drop him off at the hospital so that he could sleep it off in the drunk ward. At the hospital the next day, Poe was agitated and skittish. He was speaking gibberish and all of the doctors just assumed he was still intoxicated. Overnight, he became less erratic, but the next day, Poe still was not making any sense. At this point, Poe was refusing to drink even water. The following day, Poe awoke delirious and began calling out the name Reynolds, and he continued to do this until 3 a.m. the following morning. You may be asking, who was Reynolds? Well, Reynolds was the name of the polling official. Edgar Allan Poe died on October 7, 1849. He was only 40 years old. The cause of death was given to congestion of the brain, which explains practically nothing. Over the years, people assume that Poe died of alcohol poisoning, but that leaves the question, how could he still have been drunk after spending four days in the hospital? In recent years, doctors have re-examined Poe's medical records. Some theories that have been included to replace the congestion of the brain diagnosis include alcohol withdrawal, heart disease, epilepsy, syphilis, meningeal inflammation, cholera, and even rabies. But one thing seems perfectly clear. Poe seemed eager to take his place in death. After all, everybody he had ever loved was already there. Did you know that on the anniversary of Poe's birth, a mysterious stranger known only as the Poe Toaster leaves an offering of cognac and three roses on the site of Poe's original grave in Baltimore? The significance of the cognac is unclear, and we can only assume that the three roses represent the remains that are buried at the monument. So what do you think happened to Poe? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so that you never miss a new video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.